Imagine a world where massive creatures roamed the earth, resembling the majestic elephants we know today, but with a unique and awe-inspiring appearance. These were extinct species like the four tusk elephants, Gompothears and Stegotetrabelodon, extinct mammals that belong to the family Gomphotheidae. Living during the late Miocene to the Pleistocene epochs, these elephant-like animals existed between about 11.6 million and 11,000 years ago, captivating the imagination of people from around the globe. While they were widespread during the Pleistocene epoch, which lasted from about 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago, the knowledge about these incredible creatures didn't come until much later. In fact, it was German zoologists who first shed light on the existence of these magnificent beasts in 1837. With the discovery of these fossils, scientists have been able to use a variety of methods to determine the appearance and behavior of gompot hears, including the analysis of fossilized bones, teeth, and other anatomical features. By comparing the physical characteristics of gompot hears to those of other known species, scientists have been able to classify them as belonging to the family Gompotheidae, which includes several different genera of gompot hears and stegotetrabelodons. But the wonder of family Gomphotheidae doesn't end there. In ancient Indian literature, there are references to creatures called Chathodanthas, which were described as four tusked elephants. These creatures fit the exact description of Gompothears and Stegotetrabelodons, as they were known to have four tusks. Chathodanta is described as a white elephant with four tusks, two large ones on the upper jaw and two small ones on the lower jaw. The ancient Indian texts like Epic Ramayana are the only ones which talks about these creatures, with a reference to Chattadanta appearing in the Aranyakanda section. Here, the hero Rama and his brother Lakshmana come across a forest, where they encounter a creature with four tusks. In the ancient Indian epic, Valmiki Ramayana, the Sundarkanda describes an epic scene where Hanuman, the monkey god, enters the city of Lanka and is awestruck by the sight of magnificent creatures guarding the palaces of Ravan. These were not just any ordinary elephants, but rather Gompotheers, the extinct ancestor of modern-day elephants that possessed distinct differences in their tooth structure and even had four tusks. The Gompotheers guarding the palaces were tall and imposing, trained to protect Lanka from any potential invaders. This thrilling scene paints a picture of a grand city protected by majestic creatures, highlighting the rich cultural and knowledge hidden in ancient Indian scriptures. What's even more incredible is that the Vedas and Puranas, ancient Indian texts, suggest that the Gompotheers existed during the Treta Yuga, which lasted for 1,296,000 years before the Kali Yuga started. It has been 5,100 plus years since Kali Yuga started, making the sum of all years, since the beginning of the recent Treta Yuga approximately 2 million years, the same time period when the skeletons of Gompot Hears were believed to exist. Even the Ram Setu Bridge currently known as Adams Bridge connecting India with Sri Lanka is supposed to have been built around the same time. In the ancient Indian epic Mahabharata, it is mentioned that Duryodhana, one of the Kaurava princes, rode a special four-tusked elephant named Ashwatthama into the Battle of Kurukshetra. Ashwatthama was known to be a very powerful and fierce elephant with exceptional strength and stamina, and his four tusks made him even more unique and formidable on the battlefield. During the Battle of Kurukshetra, Ashwatthama carried Duryodhana on his back and charged into the Pandava army, causing havoc and destruction. He was feared and respected by both sides for his size, strength, and ferocity. Eventually, Bhim, one of the Pandava princes, faced off against Ashwatthama in a fierce battle. After a long and brutal fight, Bhim was able to pierce the elephant's armor with his mace, and then struck him in the forehead with his sword, killing him instantly. Another place where these ancient species are mentioned is in Angkor Wat, a temple complex located in Cambodia that was built during the Khmer Empire in the early 12th century. The complex was originally built as a Hindu temple dedicated to the god Vishnu. Later, during the 16th century, it was transformed into a Buddhist temple. The temple complex is known for its elaborate architecture and intricate carvings, which depict various scenes from Hindu and Buddhist mythology. 
the most prominent deity depicted at Angkor Wat is Vishnu, who is one of the principal deities in the Hindu. There are also depictions of various creatures, including the four tusk elephants. The engravings of four tusked elephants at Angkor Wat depict these sacred animals in various poses, such as standing, walking, or carrying objects. They are often shown with other animals similar to other extinct species of monkeys, hyena or deer, and are sometimes depicted as being ridden by humans. With no other contemporary book or script in the history of mankind describing four tusked elephants, the ancient Indian texts including Ramayana and Mahabharata remains the only source of information on these incredible creatures. Let's talk about other elephants mentioned in the Indian texts, the steppe mammoth, has similarities with Mariga Vyada elephant. These majestic beasts had long, curved tusks and a similar overall body shape, with a large head, bulky body, and thick legs. The Mariga Vyada elephant was a fierce creature often hunted by kings and warriors, mentioned in the Matsya Purana, one of the 18 major Puranas in Hinduism. Next, we have the dwarf elephant, also known as pygmy elephants which closely follows the figure of Vamana elephant. As per Brahma Purana, it is described as being smaller in size compared to other elephants mentioned in the Puranas. Pygmy elephants were smaller in size compared to other elephant species, with the dwarf elephant evolving to adapt to island environments. The Vamana elephant, on the other hand, was a dwarf elephant that was a favorite mount of the god Vishnu as per Brahma Purana. We also have some species of mammoth which has close resemblance with the Ardachandra elephant, both these mammoths and the Ardachandra elephant have long, curved tusks and similar appearance. Some of these mammoths have a thick, woolly coat to help it survive in difficult environments, while the Ardachandra elephant has a unique, crescent-shaped tusk similar to these mammoths and it's believed to be a big armored elephant. This elephant is mentioned in several Indian texts, including the Mahabharata, and the Kavyami Mamsa. The name Ardha Chandra also means half moon symbolizing its curved tusks. Another elephant named Riksaraja elephant. Mentioned in ancient Indian texts such as Skanda, Padma and Vayu Purana. This elephant is brown in color like the color or trees. Its two tusks were like branches of trees and it was huge. Doesn't it sound like Paleoloxodon nomadicus or woolly mammoth? Today we focused only on elephants but in a world where modern science is constantly discovering new species and reclassifying old ones, it's easy to get lost in the numbers. But did you know that ancient Indian texts, dating back at least 5000 years, have already given us a clear picture of the number of species on earth? The Bhagavad Gita, a timeless text from the Mahabharata, tells us that there are 8.4 million different life forms on this planet. That's right, 8.4 million. The text goes on to explain that the soul can be born as any of these life forms, including humans, which is a rare and precious opportunity. But the Bhagavad Gita is not alone in its assertion of the number of species. The Padma Purana, another ancient text from the same period, takes things a step further by categorizing the 8.4 million species into different groups based on their characteristics. According to the Padma Purana, there are 0.9 million water-based life forms, 2 million immobile life forms such as plants and trees, 1.1 million reptiles, 1 million birds, 3 million terrestrial animals, and 0.4 million human-like animals. These numbers not only give us a glimpse into the incredible diversity of life on our planet, but also show us how much our ancient ancestors understood about the natural world. Today, biologists have named and listed around 1.3 million species, but they also agree that this number is likely a significant underestimate of the total number of species on Earth. Every year, Around 15,000 new species and life forms are discovered, and taxonomists around the world continue to work towards listing and studying all the species on our planet. But the ancient Indian texts have already given us a clear picture of the diversity of life on Earth, a diversity that is still being discovered and appreciated to this day. So the next time you look out at the world around you, 
remember that there are probably 8.4 million different life forms out there, each one unique, some extinct and precious in its own way. Thanks for watching. If you like our videos, please consider subscribing. Be enlightened.